How's it going guys, it's Mr. Lone Wolf, and uh, today yeah, I managed to get the review done for this one, the uh, Tatra Phoenix, so it's the one with the high range and all the rest of it. I even managed to early, see before I started the review, went for a little bit of loaf time because I was enjoying myself, and I, uh, I found the upgrade for this which I forgot about and it was a good job because then when I started this I'd have been like, oh yeah, crap, I need the, uh, the upgrade. So yeah, I found the engageable diff, I'll show you where the location of that is just very quickly because I'll probably do a separate video on it. So yeah, we'll get stuck in. Uh, engine wise, all the top three rays of or whatever, the bottom one appears to be the best, it's slightly better on the power, it's slightly better on the fuel consumption and all the rest of it, so there's not really any disadvantage to it, it's got nice power to it and all the rest of it. I'm definitely going for the high range, I like I always do, but you got the, I don't know, the off-road and the fine tune and all that. There is no raisable suspension, it's stock, but to be fair, if you look at it, it's like it's already been raised, it's got some pretty decent uh, suspension travel, so uh, yeah, not really any complaints there, to be honest, doesn't particularly need raised suspension beyond what it's got. Uh, the tyres, the overall issue for me is the, the 46 inch, which if you look, like, the second axle to be fair, there's not a whole lot of room, but it could do with, yeah, 48s to 50s would be nice. Uh, the winch, I've put the top one on. This is like the diff, as I said, I'll just very quickly, I'm on the second mat, Antonovsky, there's the entrance, that's like at the opposite end, that warehouse thing, that's where I got the cement from in Don's right hand. And it's just down here, there's that little wiggly road, I was travelling down here just to uncover more of the map, and then, uh, yeah, when I was driving along with my loaf, I could just see it off to the left. It flashed up the uh, upgrade, so I went and grabbed it. It's a goddamn horse. Um, yeah, spare tyre can go on the back there, I leave it off, I believe. I probably will put it on, because to be fair, it doesn't really hog a lot of room or anything like that, but just usually in these videos I strip away all the attachments. Uh, Snorkel-wise, I'd definitely go with the one on the roof, because that one, I assume it all start moaning you know when you like the waters at the low end of that snot that had like a big long bar the one on the roof's just the one on the roof in it um yeah all the attachments that crane it's bigger than a little crane but i haven't really found it to be any more useful it just takes up more room it's a big fuel tank that's 2000 liters i think and then it's got the sideboard bed which uh, i think yeah looks pretty cool sort of suits the truck i like that it's color coded as well which is pretty nice as for all the attachments on the front i don't know what's going on it brought up some menu things saying like yeah, it basically just completely deleted the front bumper, which in theory, <laughs> for a second, that's why I was like, hmm, actually. Like, not to say it looks the best, but it'll stop everything, like, yeah, the less stuff there, the less stuff there is to catch. Um, I was just looking through some of the different attachments again, there's all just various bits and bobs, you put the roll cage on, you know, fog lights, all that crap, horns, all the, uh, the usual stuff, really. Uh, this is the fender, I have no idea why, unless this is a different truck, actually. I took the fenders off mine, but... They were back on and equipped on. Um, yeah, front bumper wise, I would recommend this one. I personally, I like the look of that. I think it's quite a nice, clean, modernish looking truck that looks pretty cool. But both of those have got like that lower, you know, with the headlights and everything on. Uh, the and that's even got like the bars underneath as like an extra, uh, what you call it, like a sump guard or whatever. But yeah, the the middle one is just objectively sits higher, like so, for nose clearance reasons. That's why I've gone with that. Um, exhaust, I would just go leave the stock one because it's just going to spray the smoke out where your tyres are, so it's just never ever going to get in the way of your third person camera. Rims, there's two lots, I'm not already bothered about those to be honest. And then paint job, I actually think as well, looks nice there in black, that suits it pretty well. The grey and the white, all like they all uh, suit it pretty well. That colour's nice, red with the sort of gold. Blue with a black at the back, sort of two-tone green looks pretty nice. I personally do quite like that one. I like that one as well, to be honest. It's a nice green. I would probably pick that if this orange wasn't available. And uh, yeah, so that's a look at that. I'll go out in the garage, have a little spin around. As far as, like, say, the truck itself, I do think it's quite a good-looking truck. It's pretty cool uh, that it's a cab over and all the rest of it. Like I said, we have a lot of these in England, not necessarily, you know, the eight-wheel setup and all the rest of it, but that's what they look like a lot in England. And uh, yeah, obviously, uh, most of them in this game sort of have some kind of hood and nose to the vehicle. Inside looks all pretty modern, so I'm guessing this is like Tatra's, one of their most recent uh, trucks. Got a sunroof, which is pretty cool. Little window in the back. You can't see loads through it, but it's there. It's better than trucks that haven't got a window. Uh, stick my head out the window. I can even read the exit that's written down the wall on the other side of that garage, and most importantly, I can see my tyres. That's the horn. It's not terrible. I don't dislike it. At least it's got some oomph to it. It's a bit squeaky, but at least it's, yeah, got a bit of presence to it. Uh, looking at the revs, I think it's idle at about 1,000, only revs up to like 1,600 or something, so not loads. Apologies, my phone beep there, it's not your <laughs> it's not your phone if you just heard that. 
Um, yeah, Rev a little bit slow to rev and all that, but it doesn't necessarily translate to the characteristics of the vehicle. I've done reviews on vehicles before, some rev slow, some don't. Nice little drift there, because I could stick it straight and high. The nice here, it reminds me like a fatter version of the Voron Grad in that sense. Quite like that it drifts, but it won't dig in and try and flip, it actually just drifts very nicely. Uh, Trailer-wise, you can't have a saddle low, which I think is a mistake. Um, so I could have all the towable trailers and all the subtle high trailers, but no, you know, sideboard semi-trailer and all that stuff. Um, yeah, so go for a little drive. It's got the rear steer, which is cool. So even there, I've rolled trucks there before, because as you dip on the outside, as you sort of swerve around that corner, this thing I think is very good for not tipping. It does feel like all the weight's just in the chassis, along those chassis rails and all the rest of it, and the tyres and gearbox and engine. Everything from everything painted orange doesn't really feel like it weighs a lot. Uh, coming up to this section, so we're in high gear. I wasn't sure if it'd struggle here. In theory, it should do as well as the Dolphin, which got its name from here. It's the off-road Dolphin, Azov 5319, or whatever it's called, for people who are wondering why I call it the Dolphin, because it flew through there and I just said it looked like an off-road Dolphin. Um, going through, up and bobbing up and down the waves. That, see there, I overcooked it a bit on the corner. I wasn't really, I forgot the whole drifting situation. That was my bad. And again, I do quite like that it'll step the back end out a little bit. But not to a crazy, it's not like unruly in it. Unruly, I don't think I've ever said that word before. Um, I don't know, yeah, it's, it's quite nice, it's quite sort of tame about it. Funnily enough, to, I was going to say, like, when I had that M5, you had three, ver you had, like, traction control off, traction control on, but then you had one called M mode that would kick the traction in at the top end, but other than that, it was traction off, so you could, like, boot it and get the arse end out, but then... The computer system would catch it for you, so you didn't need, you know, it was, it was just very easy, like, easy mode drifting and messing around and all the rest of it. That's kind of what this felt like. Managed to make a little dog up here. Just about, there he was. <laughs> Give him a horn before I run his little ghost over. Um, yeah, so that's just what, like, this feels quite nice, easy drifting. You only have to feather the throttle a tiny bit and it won't even d drift for you, so it's easily avoidable, but it's just pretty cool that it's there. Flying down here, I was trying to attempt, I've not lined up for these trees <laughs> again, overcooked it a bit, I was trying to hit all three. Hit one, I managed to kill the other two, and then I killed that big tree, it's, like normally I hit those three trees in a row, yeah I think it could do two to three each time. Actually went very nice through there as well, not a lot of trucks get slowed down there to where they don't like staying in high, this thing actually just, which I was surprised at that, because the thing's got quite small tyres. Um, I kind of figured it'd tap out pretty easily there, but yeah, nailed through there, it's going along here, nice little drift going on round there, but again, the weight's so low, there's no... Trucks that are a little bit iffy and tippy will start to lean over to the right a lot, going up that little bit, I just was. Uh, running over rocks, kind of, yeah, rock test. Take the odd one damage here and there, suddenly I think I've belt something here, yeah. I d it can happen, it's happened in this truck, it's not terrible, it's not trying to blow itself to pieces every time you go on a journey, but... Every now and then, you know, you can get unlucky, smack a little section like that, and it'll just whack like 20 off your suspension instead of one. Slipped into the hole there. <laughs> That's definitely what she said. Um, yeah, I wasn't planning on swerving off to the right, but kept it pinned. It didn't tip, wasn't iffy or anything, just drove straight back out there. A couple of more little single pieces of damage, but nothing to write home about. I was glad I, I was umming an R in which uh, review to do. I chose this one in the end because it's a quicker vehicle. See, even there, like, I wouldn't have the confidence to just dick around and fling a panic winch out and, like, Spider-Man swing my way out of that ditch if I already had a feeling like this thing's gagging to tip. Uh, flying down here, drop the hammer, go for the uh, anti-terrorist barricade. About to have me fucking virgins in paradise. Nope. <laughs> anti-terrorist barricade did the job this time. Which is no reflection on this truck. You can just get unlucky sometimes to hit them and flip, but, yeah, that's what happened with that one. So, going across this... Uh, What's it called? Like the Black River, River Crossing. Everything goes super slow at the beginning, not too sure why, but I suppose that's like the original uh, sort of super mud slash death mud section. I was checking out the revs just to see what difference like the uh, rev ranges is between like low, medium and, uh, sorry, not medium, auto and uh, high gear. Overall, it's not rapid through here. Part of that will be the smaller tyres, because again, then for every revolution of the tyre, you travel in I don't know, 46 inch times pi rather than 50 inch times pi. Like, yeah, you, you 
travelling an extra foot per rotation of the wheel, say, when you've got a 50 inch tyre, so that's why this thing will be a little bit slower, but it never really felt like it was going to get stuck through here. And then the other nice thing is, well, I jam it in high about now, and it's pretty relaxed at moaning about when you put it in high, as long as you're not, you know, you don't try and put it in high when you're going a half a mile an hour and you're not even accelerating, but even if you're just building a bit of speed, it's pretty chilled at just letting you slam it in <laughs> and then drop the hammer. That's how it needs to be. Going through here in high over the snow, no issues at all. I purposely drop it down out of high here. But climbing over these barriers, see, nose clearance wise, not an issue. Slightly smaller tyres, I look like I caught the chassis of Tad there, but it's not enough to where it stops me. Climb over that with uh, no major problems. And sometimes I cut this little bit out, I just do it for my own personal curiosity, try and drive over these rocks. A lot of trucks tip over to the right. I flung a winch out there, but if you look now, that winch is definitely slack. That's not, that wasn't, that was like a safety rope, but that wasn't actually stopping me from tipping or anything then. So it actually one of the few trucks that climbed over those rocks. Here, however, I can't quite work out what it is I'm hitting because it, it's just like the hitboxes aren't quite perfect to what we can see. But you see those little steps at the front of the truck? It's as if they've got a little bit of a hitbox poking out, but then you can see there, I kind of like the steps sort of phased through that barrier. So I don't know, something was catching a little bit once I got the angle right and bumped over. See, that is literally where I think if it had 50 inch tyres, I could have just drove straight at the barrier and would have had just enough tallness to clear it. But that barrier there, the second barrier test, is a little bit more like it's one of the few places where the barrier clearly sits higher than because the snow is just a lot lower on the other side. Got over there, no issues, even slapped it in high for a little bit. Um, drive along here to this rock. And again, some trucks can just be really skiddy, their nose will try and slip off to the left, the right. If they're a bit iffy with tipping, they'll try and tip over to the left or right. This thing was pretty easy to climb up there. I think I flung a winch out a second ago. I didn't mean to. I probably just, I don't know, like natural reaction. <laughs> just hit the winch button. Climb down there. Didn't tip off to the right or anything as it, yeah, didn't catch its nose on the snow as the front end dropped down. Going for the, uh, the old wall jump test. This was generally my first ever attempt at it. Obviously I only just got the truck myself really. But yeah, it went pretty well. I mean, look at him go. See Mexicans jump walls less enthusiastically than that. So uh, yeah, that was pretty good. I had a feeling it'd be good to be honest because it's got like such decent nose clear at the angle of the nose and all the rest of it. The front axle does sit fairly close to the front nose and yeah, so I kind of had a good feeling about it and it went pretty well. Going through these trees as well. See, I've not been through here for a good couple of weeks or whatever, a month or probably more actually because the last time I did a review video was like Phase 4's stuff I think. Uh, yeah, slipped right in first time. <laughs> Definitely what she said. I it climbed up this hill just fine. The only reason I edited, edited it out is one for time, and two, I'm gonna go and do the same thing later when I go up into the mountains anyway. So I may as well instead of just sort of the same footage twice. Uh, yeah, next up the old cargo test though, and I've had to get the big trailer. I would much rather the little sideboard semi trailer. But obviously, it's sort of that's this truck's problem, not mine. But that's what I would prefer. So it's at a bit of a disadvantage, but it's its own disadvantage that it brings. Like I didn't set it up, <laughs> not being harsh to it. Um, but to its credit, with the rear steering and all the rest of it, got around the yard, no issues. Came out of there, stick it in high now and drop the hammer. Um, if I did put it in auto, it does get up to eighth eventually, I believe. But again, it's just feels like trucks all across the board are a little bit less punchy at slamming those revs down and just letting you power up to the next gear. It all feels a little bit more relaxed about the whole situation. But it's enough to get you going. Am I here? I can't see, sorry, because it shrinks the screen. I was in 7th or 8th, I would have thought. And then going around here uh, for the old snow test, like cutting across from the main road on Northport over to kind of the fuel station, really. And again, I kind of had a decent feeling about this, because I knew the front nose clearance was pretty good. And it got a little bit close there, because you can see that route that, I don't know, appeared 20 or 30 reviews in. So I don't know how or why, Route Man, maybe that was his interview. 
and then now they've finally hired him and he's just gone mad on phase five with tree roots everywhere but yeah uh for any that have seen like a you know just a, at least a chunk of the reviews i've done before to know that's not a bad effort through there especially that it's got a fat heavy wide trailer whatever the bloody hell it's called And again, because the turning circle's decent, I did go a little bit wide there. And the trailer, if it was a sideboard semi-trailer, it just the whole package would look more neat and compact. I probably wouldn't have needed to go as wide around that corner to begin with. But yeah, the point is, I made the turn before I hit that blue trailer. And then now, I actually get it up into high gear and it pulls along. I, this is now a sort of my fault because I swerved a bit too far to the left now to correct to the right. And I kind of lost my, my momentum in high. Um... I just left this in just for any of you that <laughs> want to see the old uh, the trailer store of goodness. Every single trailer represents a review I've done. <laughs> and we're, uh, yeah, it's going pretty well. We're all the way down. I'm nearly at the water now. I don't know what. I'll, I'll have to start filling up that little yard to the left and all sorts. See a couple of the big fat trailers on the uh, left there, or right, whatever. Depends which way the camera is rotated. Yeah, look, I could I barely even move my cursor thing around in that place, so. That's, uh, it represents a lot of hours work getting all them trailers there. Flying through the water though, there's a little deep section there. You can see that it thought about slowing me down a bit, but there wasn't really any major issue. Going along here though, ploughing along in high gear through the water, so that's a pretty standard issue, but good news. There is a few trucks that struggle there. You can make it through this gap, it's not anything like, you know, custom levels of wide like the P16 or something for example, so get through there with no issues that's patch of super snow that's like og super snow tree branch there it didn't really get too messed up by that either and once i get out of that super snow and it goes back to normal with like you can see the little tracks i got caught on a tree there that maybe they've done something with the coding that the actual trees themselves have just became more i don't know iffy they just grip onto you and that's it like locks into your hitbox and it, it's not a case of you're stuck on it like how you would be in real life it's just yeah it's sort of just locks in like little magnets a bit more super snow there I, you know what as well just while I remember I apologise because normally I switch to an interior view now I forgot I, re I realised just when I was editing the footage a minute ago the only reason I can't go back now and load the game up and do it all is because I've got I've used my 50 out of 50 clips I can add into this when I make a video to add to go back and like well to film me driving interior view wouldn't take long but I'll have to render this entire clip that's 50 minutes and then recut it start a new project it's a major pain in the ass so i will get interior footage i've been in the interior all i can say is the dashboard felt low enough that it didn't feel like it was blocking my view on the low end the roof felt high enough so it didn't feel like it was crowding me and sort of i don't know you know like when you start dipping down a hill you now can't see the horizon in front of you because the roof is sort of in your way so yeah view out the cab i think is fine I just, yeah, apologies for that because I forgot to get the uh, footage of it. Even through that little mud bit back there as well, it smashed through there with no issues. I was in high as well. Took a little bit of damage there. This is again where slightly bigger tyres, 15 inch tyres would be nice because it would just be like, well, an extra two inches of it'll lift like my axle kind of thing. But it didn't take any major crazy damage or nothing like that. And this is not that often. I leave all of this in because I normally edit it about now. But I kind of could tell from the punchiness of the gearbox how relaxed it is in high gear and all the rest of it. I'll hit a patch here now of snow where it lets you like burst up to speed again. Then you hit a bit that slows you down. But not that many trucks can stay in high where it's worth it. This thing's actually maintaining enough speed in high that yeah, I can just leave it in it keep it pinned and yeah it's getting the job done turning circles easy go around there don't catch the roof on those pipes tall like tallness isn't an issue sometimes the club for example can catch those pipes didn't even drop out a high going down that little snowbank which is fairly rare as well so can't really knock it for that like pretty good job on that little course around there I have to say it's ironic really that this thing seemed pretty decent and you know how like they've added chain for this as well, but they've given they've given us a map that has no snow. But then when they give us phase four with four snow maps, they give us a zix that has no chains, and it's like they're off the rockers sometimes. The uh, however it is they work out the decisions they're going to do. Um, long story short, it's not amazing in the mud. I was driving along the edge, 
cut through to the middle. I now got stuck. I ended up winching to that tree to my left. I just cut the rest out because, honestly, I drove down the edge of the mud from then on and I got out of there, but nothing special, nothing to write home about. And, again, just didn't, like, otherwise this video, you know, be getting on to nearer an hour if I just didn't cut out all the little pointless bits. I've tried to leave all the bits in that highlight its good points and I'll just, yeah, I'll be honest about the bad points. It's got slightly small tyres and it didn't do well in that death mud section because it just isn't tall enough with 46 inch tyres. It's got great ground clearance but the tyres themselves aren't very big and that's the different, that's where it will bite it in like that death mud section. So a lot of trucks would tip now, but I thought that was thinking about it. And as well, I've had this quite a few times, because I'm driving you can see I'm already going on a bit of an awkward angle. That did well not to tip there. I'd say, I don't know. Eight and nine other trucks, eight and nine out of ten, would have tipped there. And how, <laughs> ask me how I know. So I have to send a bloody Tager and a goddamn horse of a vehicle in every time to go and reflip them. There is something I will say, like even though the ground clearance is great and all the rest of it, there's something on the front that feels like it's got a bit of a blunt hitbox that catches a little bit, it'd be nice if they could smooth it out, which they may do, because originally when, like, say the flat face colob, the 747 one, that used to be horrific for catching its skid plate or the sump guard or whatever. They fixed that at some point, like way back, probably a year ago now. Um, so it's possible they could do that, they, you know, they might just need to smooth out a few rough edges. It was hard enough, you can see there, to get the bloody thing to tip, and once it did, it only rolled once, but... You can see it, how it kind of levered itself back to its wheels, so... Again, yeah, it's pretty solid all around for, like, tipping-wise is, a uh, No complaints I like, because it feels realistic. That's what, like, if you... This truck in real life, the majority of the weight is along the chassis rails, the axles, the engine gearbox, blah, blah, blah. The cab, by comparison, is nothing. It doesn't really have any control over the rest of the truck. And that's how this feels, and, yeah, I sort of... It's good. Uh, made around that little sort of snowy corner. Again, some of the tippier trucks are not too keen about turning that corner without uh, rolling over into the snow ditch to the right of it. Or the left, sorry. Pretty standard up here. Climbed up to there. Had to scoot over to the left, which is what near enough every single truck does. But again, some of the tippier ones can try and tip to the left as I'm scooting over. This didn't have any issues with that. Climbed up there. Now, to be honest, I practically, like, test is done now, but just for my own curiosity, I do it with vehicles. I just drive along this little edge to see how far I can get. The most vehicles have already tipped off to the left by now. See, again, though, I believe my sump guard, whatever, skid plate is, uh, just that blunt hitbox is actually catching on it. Rather than hitting it and then skidding over it, it's, yeah, they're just clipping and they're locking in place. But it eventually took that's still very good. Like, there ain't many trucks that are going to get that far. The loaf can drive along the uh, peak of that, but he's a goddamn professional, so shouldn't really come as a surprise. And like I said, similar thing. I mean, driving up here, it's got I've got the chain on at the minute. And that's what, like, but just for what it's worth, I mentioned the chain a minute ago. I'm glad it comes with chain. It's just funny how... They give us chained when we get a summer map, and then they don't give us chained when we get four winter maps. And one other thing I like about it, you can see because of how far back the second axle is, and they're quite close, the second and third axle are quite close, so I don't bottom out on that peak. I can drive over it, piece of piss. Right, that can actually, yeah, go over some pretty sharp angles. As far as, like, the middle goes, you're not going to beach it in the middle, which is nice to know. Oh uh, yeah, next up the old quarry test. Got a goddamn professional behind me. Um, I didn't... If I didn't have to, I don't want to bring the ramped flatbed. I'd much rather do this test with a... Uh, sideboard semi-trailer. But yeah, it doesn't give me the option. And to be honest, this test would be pretty horrific with that big, fat, wide... Whatever the bloody hell it's called. So... I don't know. The lesser of two evils, but I still ain't happy about it. To its credit, though, no issues. Do you know, my cat was turned up at this point, I remember, and I was saying hello to him and that, but I wasn't paying a lot of attention, that's why I went a little bit wide as I was uh, coming out there, but that kind of the point is that it was so 
normal through there. I was like, oh, say hello to my cat for a minute. I wasn't having to think like, oh god, make sure I get the right line, the right gear, the right revs. Otherwise, it's any second it'll get stuck. It just yeah, cruise through there. No doubt the loaf was helping. It's the kind of thing he does. See with the revs though, considering it's highway gearbox, or you know, it wasn't smashing it down there. Any reason I reverse then? I was trying to drop off the lip as sharp as possible. Like the wider you go there, the less severe the angle changes. So I was trying to kind of yeah, make sure I give it a <laughs> give it the harder part. <laughs> Well, I said, never mind there. Uh, grab some concrete slab. You see, it starts to bog down. This is the trailer more than anything. I'm going to cut it in a set, and you'll see why. Long story short, I've left the chain ties on. I forgot to switch back to muds. Have it, knowing what I know now, I'm quite happy to just leave the chain on. I've said this before, but nonetheless, I've tested it with both. So, yeah, I've got the chain on right now. Um, I'm understeering a bit. I fling a winch out to me loaf. I always put the loaf there on this test as like a mobile winch point. It's pretty handy for it. And to be fair, I could have possibly approached a, a bit of a better line. So that's not on the truck at the minute. That was like half and half. It did understate. It's not like it was all on me. But at the same time, it wasn't all on the truck. But it got stuck here, which is where, you know, the Zix got stuck here. Because of the ramped flatbed, uh, the Colob got stuck here. They're both hauling machines, but they just don't like getting that ramped flatbed over the first lip of the hill. Uh, yeah, it was when I got to the top I realised, oh yeah, I've not got the muds. So I went back, put muds on, came back. Now if you watch the trailer, the wheel, look when it hits that rock. Like, the trailer, I don't know, is behaving to me even worse than it used to. And I wasn't really keen on it to begin with. And I could, there was just something about it now I could tell. This isn't the truck struggling just because the truck's a bit meh. It's like the trailer is creating some serious drag and it's like, yeah, it's just the truck struggling to pull something that really doesn't want to slide along the mud. So I, I do get a bit of a better line, shall we say, to start off. I do think, stay, understeering a bit though, but I fling a winch out to my loaf just to make sure it keeps me sort of nice and tight on the line. And they basically got stuck, like, the same issues both times. The first time, by the way, with the, uh, oh, I think I did leave the footage in. The loaf got the truck up to the top uh, with the chains. And then again, I edited most of it out. I just wanted to then try this way where I disconnect the trailer and see if I can pull it up with a winch. But then this is why I left this little bit in, because look at the that trailer hitch thing. I think someone said it was called the tong. I don't know. <laughs> Makes sense. I'm just saying I ain't a trailer expert, so I don't know. Um, yeah, you can see it shaking around, which is a bit odd. But now, look, the whole trailer body itself is flicking. It's just something ain't right. Like, So, I'm happy to say this truck wouldn't have knocked the quarry test out of the park because it's got little tyres and that really doesn't help. And it's not allowed to have the sideboard semi-trailer, which is even worse. But, I think there might be a little bit of another issue again since the update they might have broke the ramped flatbed a little more something just didn't feel right with it or it never felt right anyway but it felt even more wrong <laughs> so yeah it is what it is I can uh, sort of you've seen how it's been doing uh, climbing up here we got to about here now it's wheel spinning It's just out of curiosity, I'd like to put a sideboard semi-trailer, same cargo, all the rest of it, and just see if, you know, it gives me a bit more of a fighting chance or not. But, as usual, stick the loaf in his little loaf hole, stick a winch on him, he gets the job done. So not only has the loaf got a 100% rescue record, he's rescued every single vehicle in this game I've ever sent him to rescue, but... He's also got 100% uh, pulling every single vehicle he's ever attempted to up this hill.
I was leaving it there, by the way. You can see after I disconnected the winch from the low flight, it started letting me drive up. Which, probably because of the angle by now, there's nothing left for the trailers. It wasn't getting hooked, so it now just allowed the truck to apply what power it's got. Um, yeah, got to the top of the hill. It wouldn't. There wasn't enough guts to it or whatever to get me over the brow of the hill, so I stuck a winch to that tree. And drive around there. You see, funnily enough, I quickly switch to the loaf and move the loaf out of the way. Probably was a uh, bad idea, because switch back to this, go to reverse, trailer immediately tip if I left the loaf where it was. But again, I still think it's excessive how keen the cargo is to fall off. I'll be honest, by this point, I'd already done this test twice because I did the chain <laughs> and the muds. I was like, nah, I'm not going back to get some more bloody concrete slabs just to drive from here to like a truck's length in front of me and then I'm just going to send it down a hill and let them go flying off anyway. And yeah, I don't really know what this <laughs> bit particularly proves. I just I like flying down here. Jumps off there pretty nicely though. Didn't catch its chin, so I suppose we learned that. Caught its chin there because just the way kind of when I jumped, but it didn't tip. Didn't completely delete the vehicle or anything like that. So next up I'm in, I uh, can't even remember the bloody name, Lake Coved. Basically I had to smash through here as you can see and I got stuck. Again, 46 inch tyres don't help, I got stuck on a barrel, which I'm not too uh, impressed with. The good side of it, this thing you can drop it in high gear pretty quick as I said, and then just full send, drop the hammer, launch it and I sort of got over that way, so yeah there's sort of it hinders itself one way with little tyres, but it also helps that you can just stick it in high pretty damn quickly. Like, half a truck length after you set off. Oh yeah, and then I forgot to switch back to chained. <laughs> but I left that in because quite often, every truck will do that if you've got muds or whatever, just not chained. But a lot of them, once they've skidded sideways, they'll suddenly dig in and your truck will flip. This never did, it was just skidding on ice, like you see there, just drifting around, which again, I like that mechanic and characteristic. It's close there, but it managed to get out. And to be honest, it did so normal through there that I kind of got a little bit of a, uh, a false sense of security going, so I drove across here, just about winged it. That probably should have been the uh, <laughs> my clue, not to take the piss too much. Going this way, I mean again, like it's not terrible, it is crossing, but it's breaking the ice as I'm going, and it's one of those, again, long story short, it's got 46 inch tyres, once I do fall into the ice, you just, yeah, your chassis's gone too deep, or your tyres ain't touching anything underneath to be able to grip and pull you out of there. So I'm done. Send in the old twin steer, don't really, I don't know, just, why not? <laughs> Give a little nudge, drive over it stick a winch on but you see how much it's fighting me now like even the twin steer is starting to wheel spin once it bumps up a little bit it just suddenly becomes so much easier and it's those few inches with the smaller tires are the difference between its chassis scraping every block of ice and its chassis sitting an inch above the ice and this is just a highlight I know the twin steer has got some of the biggest tires but look at the difference like it's same tires as well they're both chained the mud versions, all the rest of it, but yeah. So at this point as well, I thought, in theory, this thing should be able to Jeff special, because um, I'm able to switch the diffs, uh, all-wheel drive and everything off. And this thing hasn't got permanent diffs, but I said the other day I think it might do, because of the way it they had different descriptions with the diffs on the uh, Force versus the Phoenix, but yeah, they're engageable, not permanent. So yeah, for a Jeff Special, uh, drop the hammer, preferably turn all-wheel drive and diff locks off, get it up to at least 7th, preferably 8th gear out of 8th in the highway box, and when it's in 8th, slam it in high, and instead of going normal high speed, it'll go Jeff Special high speed. I wanted to ram that, yeah. We'll jump off here, and then there, and to be honest with you, you can see the front of my cab floating. Now, knowing what I know now, I don't really know why. I kind of thought then, oh, it's like a bit of a sneak preview. It looks like the front of the cab might float. 
but yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. I'll just I'll mention it there so you actually kind of remember the clip for it in a few minutes. Uh, crossing this river in what's this one again? Flooded foothills. Not too bad to be honest. There is a lot of rocks and everything under there, so. But at least, again, I mean, it's got 46 inch tyres, but it does also feel like it has very good raised suspension, so it doesn't suffer in the same, it, it doesn't take the full hit of small tyres, it's still helped itself a little bit by sitting tall, so you might have small tyres, but you're not catching the chassis on everything, which does still help a little bit. And uh, yeah, going along here, there's a reason why like, I'll cut across the river there, that's pretty normal. But as I go up here, again, still on flooded foothills. Some of you uh, would have ended up going up this slide before. It's like a waterfall, sort of, that you can drive up. But the reason I left it in is because I put it in high gear. And I just thought it was a decent bit of footage to show you how chilled high gear is. Like, it doesn't really moan. I'm still in high, I'm even feathering the throttle. It's uh, carrying its speed all the way, but you can see I'm, I went pretty slow there. And now there's one there. Look, I'm practically stopped dead, and it still doesn't say stalling. And it lets me wind back up to speed. I clip that wall and near enough stop dead. In fact, I probably technically bounced back a tiny bit, and it still didn't stall. And then again, as soon as I can put the power down and wind back up to speed, it does. And then as well, this corner here, I'm going to go off to the left, or I could go off to the right and go down. This is a dodgy, like, a lot of stuff tips there. This thing just drift the arse end round, made a load of rocks go flying, and, yeah, I'm about my way. So, I don't know, like, in that sense, uh, I like it. It's been uh, doing pretty well. And they've not just, yeah, arbitrarily ruined it by saying, oh, let's just put a shitload of weight on its roof to make it tip every two seconds for no apparent reason. Because it doesn't really work like that in real life. Uh, top speed, why is it quick, it, ironically, or whatever, it's like some people might like this, because it has got slightly smaller tyres, it doesn't have quite as much of a top speed as some of the trucks with bigger tyres, but some of the trucks with bigger tyres, just with the mechanics of this game, start heading into that territory where they now skid around like they're on ice when they're at top speed. This doesn't quite get to that point, because, it, yeah, the tyres are just slightly smaller, so, again, some people uh, might, yeah, prefer that. I tried to Jeff special it there. It was easier to Jeff special it on Lake Coved, on the ice. It wanted to go at the end there, but not quite. I just left that in because crash flipped upside down. Um, it still managed to roll back to its wheels. I've got a goddamn horse with me. Roll down. Loafs there. Catches me back end. Places me gently on the beach like a goddamn beast. So we'll go for another one. And the only reason I kept repeating these, by the way, is because I wanted to land with the Phoenix that's tipped. Now, there's like some slightly odd mechanics, which I said they've it's changed a little bit with the loaf as well. I mean, yeah, and this for future reference. I have a make Tinder. This is just going to be my profile. I don't even bother filling in the description. Just make sure that beach is nicely fucked. I don't want any nature reserves around here. Yeah, like I say, it sort of might potentially be a new <laughs> new characteristic, just something that's gone a bit awry when they've updated Phase 5, so we'll see, but generally speaking, they shouldn't be this hard to get back to the wheels, but again, I don't personally think it's specifically just the Phoenix, I've got a feeling there might be a few of the trucks that'd be, that behave like that a little bit easier than they would have, say, a month ago. So eventually, look at the life, it's got that beast. Yes, finally, got this thing to tip, which is the plan. That must be about as close as you can get to where the engine won't start, but yeah, not far off. Of course, we've got to know these things already. Well, I've already flipped this thing multiple times <laughs> with a loaf, just in my own spare time messing around and all sorts, so... I already knew what the uh, the results were going to be, but nonetheless, I like to, yeah, it's 
pretty easy to tell how hard or di whatever hard or easy trucks are to flip based on like they've all had the loaf trying to do it, and he's flipped everything. But some some are a bit of a challenge, ain't gonna lie. That bloody what was it? The Colob long nose, Jesus Christ! I think it was a beast to try and flip. Well, by the time I flipped the long nose collab, I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm confident now the loaf can flip everything, because that thing was, uh... Well, flipping it back to its wheels was not the hard part, to be fair. It was flipping it from its wheels to its side that was nigh on impossible. The loaf figured out a way, though. It's like, uh, like Jeff Goldblum said in Jurassic Park. The loaf finds a way. Uh, so, yeah, there's, like, how deep I can go. <laughs> I might have that in the Tinder profile as well, actually. Um, yeah, because the snorkel was on the roof, it did pretty well. I mean, I'm about as, like, the truck's underwater as you can get, really, before it finally starts complaining. Just fix the engine up. And then now I'm just going to drop the hammer, see how far I can actually travel underwater before it starts complaining. And, I mean, yeah, it's not really going to be applicable in this situation where you're going to drive out into the sea. But there might be the odd place where you want to cross a river and you're going to take a bit of engine damage, but if the thing can actually just plough through the water, you can kind of suck it up, pop out the other side. If you've got a goddamn horse with you, it can fix you. And uh, yeah, that's why you get yourself a loaf. <laughs> Never mind this thing. Get one of these if you've uh, got some spare change after buying every loaf you can. Uh, yeah, so I mean, in conclusion, uh, I actually really do like it. I think it's pretty decent, pretty well balanced. It's not a... Uh, like I said, tippy-wise, it's pretty good. The tyres is the biggest thing that I would like. At least 48, if not, say, 50 inches or something. But other than that... Oh, and the saddle low. I definitely think I need that. But the actual truck itself, I think, has been performing pretty decently. It did pretty well on a lot of the tests tonight. The quarry was a bit iffy, but it is what it is. I think between smaller tyres and just something did not feel right about that ramped flatbed. Yeah, that could have gone better, but whatever. It is what it is. Uh, there's plenty of trucks that have struggled on that quarry hill, like I said, including the Zix and the Colob, so it's not like uh, it's only the crap trucks that have struggled. Uh, Price-wise, it's 134 odd grand, is it? Fully upgraded. The Dolphin was only 120, that is a bargain, but I just scrolled down to that Tatra Force and that's, was it 211 grand, and I don't even think I'd upgraded that one. It didn't look like I had, anyway. And yeah, you can see the price of it there, is it like 96 grand stock versus Two, well, it might be 211, I can't quite see because it shrinks the screen. Funnily enough, I just noticed the force there had more power to weight. There's a little description there, pause it if you want to read it. I just, uh, it doesn't really say anything, it just says a oh, modern engine, good fuel, blah blah blah. Nothing, uh, no juicy little information going on in there. So, yeah, that's it. I would gladly recommend getting it. I actually think it's one of the most decent DLC trucks have been given. The Phase 3 stuff was pretty cool. The Zix was good in Phase 4. I'm not going to knock like the Zix is decent, but yeah, I just think this is like it. I think it's equipped well enough to be able to handle the maps that we've been given and just overall in general anyway, whether I was going to use it on the new maps or Phase 4, 3, 2, 1, whatever. Um, yeah, I just think it's decent enough. I think it's been well balanced enough that I could actually see me using it. I think it's a Ballpark, quite a good alternative to something like the Dolphin. There's still elements of the Dolphin that I way prefer, but I just, I'm not disappointed by this truck. I'm pretty happy overall with uh, what it can do and what it can't do. This now is just, I suppose, a little bit of, bit of Brucey bonus footage. Um, I was driving up the mountain, had no real issues going up there, which I've got the chain, so that helps in this situation. See, again, like, it, as far as beach in itself, the middle is just, it can get over like some pretty tight little peaks that a lot of other stuff will, yeah, will just bottom out. Before the cab will then lever over and let you land on your front wheels and carry on. This thing just walks over the sharp peaks of mountains like that. Uh, flying down here as well, this was um, hitting these trees. Most trucks can't kill these trees at all. This one, it's funny, It's it was close. The tree kind of bent round, it thought it had it and then it was like, nope. It dropped it. So, uh, yeah, again, it was close, but I don't know. There's probably five or ten trucks in the entire game that can knock these trees over. All the rest just bounce straight off it and can't can't handle it. Which also shows me the reason why I've sort of left that in, and it is relevant. This truck actually has some weight to it. Its tipping characteristics are good, but it's 
not like it weighs, you know, like a small bag of crisps. Like the step toe, as an example, that weighs subtle in this game. This thing actually, yeah, has some compact weight to it. That's why it's able to belt these trees, so that's good to know. I would, again, if I had the option, if they said design your own truck, I would make sure it's weighty enough to knock trees like that over. Not just for knocking trees over, but I just think it helps with the overall characteristics. It's just... I can tell. If it can knock a tree over, I already know roughly what the characteristics are going to be like. Um, yeah, and then now, as I always usually have to, the good thing is I could fit a loaf on the roof. It wouldn't let me pack it, obviously, because its wheels are hanging over, but the cab's just that right size that fit uh, in the wheelbase, basically, of the loaf, so the loaf's actually uh, not fully locked on there. I think, what truck is it where you can hook the loaf kind of over the front sun visor? I can't remember now, but yeah. He's not absolutely locked on there solid, but he's on enough that, you know, he's doing alright. So, start trying to drive over to the other island. And again, for anyone who's new, this is why you get yourself a loaf. Now, anyone driving over here would just... they wouldn't be able to get over. Because, uh, yeah, the truck can't, like, obviously, the engine will stall, it takes damage, whatever, all the rest of it. Not sure what I'm doing now. I can't edit this bit out. <laughs> I was going to say, I'll be picking the winch any second now. Oh, I know exactly what it was. My uh, down on the D-pad. I was just currently beating my remote to death at that point. Trying to encourage it to let me use down on the D-pad again. So yeah, you get in your loaf. You start the loaf. You stick a winch on the Phoenix. Put your handbrake on. And then hoover the winch in. Press triangle to start retracting the winch. And now, I've turned the Tatra Phoenix into a zombie. And it's driving underwater. It's like a little loaf periscope popping out the top. Having a look at what's going on, see where we're going. Taking his truck for a walk. Pretty normal loaf shenanigans, to be honest. I started tipping off the back there, but fire the loaf up, stick the winch from the front. It was because I was hoovering the winch in, it was obviously slowly levering me backwards. Now I just did the winch to the front, and we carry on zombie winching. See? Look at that professional. It's over life. It's the conclusion of this review. It's been the conclusion of, <laughs> of every review. I could have kept driving out, the only reason I stopped there. It's, it's veering off to the left a bit, which I didn't really want, and it looks like it's snorkel will be out of the water now anyway, so. Job's a good one. Switch to the loaf. I just repaired the Phoenix engine and all the rest of it. A winch on the uh, the loaf. I'm not leaving. Can't leave my man behind. Not when he just got you in and out the sea. Discover new lands. Christopher Colophus. That's right. I went there. And then yeah, driving up here. Um, I suppose just another little random test, but not all trucks can get up here. I was gonna say I should have just disconnected the loaf anyway, because that was never gonna go too well. And that's why I still think slightly bigger tyres would help with those two middle axles as they're trying to seesaw over a, like, a lip like that, but it got up there. There's my Hummer, still stuck in the rocks. <laughs> one day. Well, I don't know, actually, I'll say one day. If I can just pull it out of the rocks, I might do, but... I don't think I'll ever recover it. We just live there. And again, you see now I've jumped off here. So of course, like it is our loaf. The Phoenix would be screwed at this point, but loaf assumed the position. Look at him wiggling his way around. I'll tell you, one thing I did notice. Look, it's letting me turn my wheels. I'm hoping they've fixed that where you lay on your side and you can turn your wheels. I don't know. I just noticed it then, and I was like, oh yes, that's good. Good to know. So I could fling a winch out now and just tip the loaf, but. As I just noticed, I'm allowed to turn the wheels. I wanted to... It was a good chance to demonstrate why I originally liked the loaf back when you were still able to turn the wheels when you tipped on your side. I can just wiggle around. I can get the loaf off his side onto his wheels without winches or anything. Because I'll just keep eating the ground under my wheels until I sink and tip like so. And that's what I like. Yeah, that's... It is, again, for anyone new, that's why I take the loaf with me, because... 
It's like an extra life. I told you, it's like a super Mario mushroom. And um, yeah, anyway, that's about it for today, though. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks for my Patreon members. Get yourself the Phoenix. It's pretty decent. Get yourself a loaf because he's a goddamn professional. And uh, I'll be back soon.